Hello, Jim Hodges here, Trooper here. Trooper is approximately one year old Aussie came in for our residency training program. I love this. He didn't always do this before like he should, he is watching me. What am I gonna do with a dog when I want him to watch me? I'm gonna try to get their attention here and then when they're looking, I'm gonna give a treat. One of the things about Trooper is he loved treats, okay? And I would go to dig into my pocket and get a treat or I'll pull it out and now look, see where we are? What I did was I wouldn't give him a treat like this. I made him look at me, good boy. And then I would give him the treat along with words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. Remember, that's what I say with praise, okay? So uh, that's probably, he's gonna get one more treat here in a little bit and that would be with the C-O-M-E command. The other thing that I do with treats is, is when I wanna use a treat, it's only for the best of the best or for things I just have to have, okay? I will have the treat already loaded in my hand to work. This way he doesn't see me digging in my pocket and it gets his focus away from me. He's learning that to watch me is what he needs to do. And boom, there you go, good boy. And go. So the other thing that I do is you see I praise him a lot with positive emotion. When I do give him a treat, I'm gonna make sure I praise him that way, give him positive emotion so that he's gonna want to tune in to me just for that love and affection. We do have a cat. I saw a cat walk by me here in just a second. It may distract him, but he loves cats. He loves dogs. He loves people. He's just a happy, happy, happy camper, okay? And therein lies one of the big things. He loves to jump on people. He gets excited and runs around and, and doesn't stop. He likes to bark. And what we want to do is, is we don't want to stop most of those things, although we would like to reduce barking. What we want to do is temper it, and we want to praise him when he's in the mindset that we want. So if we want to pet him uh, and love him when we greet, we are not gonna get all excited and allow that excitement to get it. We're gonna wait for him to calm down. And when he calms down, that's when we're gonna give him praise, which is gonna be words and touch and positive emotion. If he ranks back up and starts to get excited, we're gonna pull away our praise. If we have to, we may tap on the leash to begin with, but I really don't think that's gonna happen too much, except for when you, his parents, go to meet someone else. We may need to bite a little bit and tell him no, okay? But uh, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Good boy. So he's sitting here watching, I wanna praise. I love Aussies for that. Of course, they're one of the smartest breeds out there. And smart dogs will test you, but this guy, he really wants to please. You ready? Let's go. Hear my tone? Now the cat must have disappeared. Let's go with him walking with me by my side, okay? I don't care where I go, how fast I go, jogging, going to a crawl. His job is to be right beside me. And then I'm gonna pet him and love him, good boy, while we're doing it, okay? So that's let's go. In the beginning, I'll do a lot of turns and slow and fast speech just to get his focus on me. But once he's got that focus, then you just go for your walks and do whatever and enjoy it and maybe give him some obedience uh, peppered in here and there, okay? Sit. Hand signal for sit, good boy. Praise, love, he loves to be praised, okay? He loves that physical touch. When I ask him to sit, he has to hold that sit until I release him, okay? Good boy. So you noticed I praised him as I was walking behind. That was just reaffirming to him he's doing the right thing. If he popped up, I'd just sit, I would go, no, sit, and then come back and give a little bit of praise. Still praise, but just not as much as if he did it right the first time. Theoretically, he has to hold that sit as long as I want, but I'm not gonna keep him in it more than a minute or two at the most. I just don't like the potential comfort level on their rear end. So from the sit, we can go into let's go, we can go to uh, break, break, good boy, break. You notice how I stepped away, pet, love. Uh, the break, I step away, that's the release of a command. And when I release him, I step away, but I'm trying to encourage him that I'm the center of the universe. Good boy, okay? What was that praise there for? For looking at me, all right? So that's what break is. It's also the precursor to the C-O-M-E command. And that's gonna be real important for him too, and he's gonna do it. He loves treats, and we're gonna use treats uh, a lot, and then we're gonna back off of them on the uh, recall. So now we have the SIT, you know what that command is like. Now here's D-O-W-N from the front, down. 
Good boy. Down means down. If he didn't down, I would tap the leash. When I ask him to down, just like in the sit, he has to hold that down until I release him, okay? No stays involved. Uh, just down means be there and wait for my next command like he's doing right now. I'm going to reach in. Good boy. You notice how I come in calmly. I'm not going to come in excited because that's going to help him make a mistake that I don't want him to do right now, okay? So down is like this. Down from the front is like that. Sit. Good boy. Let's go. So we're going to turn back around. We're going to walk back over here. Down. Hand signal down from the side. Good boy. Same thing as before. Same, uh, everything I said with the down, if he needs to hold it, I would tap it if he didn't do it. One thing about our dogs, if they do something once, they're destined to do it over and over again. If it's something you like, put a word to it, and you've got a new trick or a command. If it's something you don't like, you've got to interfere and bite, okay, and provide a consequence. Remember, praise is words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. And we use as many of those as we can when we're giving them, especially in the beginning, in that moment of time that we want him to understand that we were praising him for that. Consequence is primarily words and touch, but guess what? It can also be avoiding him. If he's being crazy, wanting to meet, we're going to be calm, we're going to ignore if we can't do anything else to teach him that we can't. No, no, down. See, that's terrible of me, but he's in a down. He should be waiting for my next command. Now, I could go down, stay. Now, if I tell him to stay, he can smell the ground, he can roll on the side and go to sleep, he can chew a bone, he can smell himself, he can scratch, but I don't want him to do those things in the midst of working. If there was a failure in that situation, it was primarily the handler, because I put him in the down and he just was starting to chill and relax instead of me keeping his focus by working him. But that's something that we look. Remember, if it happens once, it's gonna happen again and again. So same place to the human, if you're doing something you need to improve on, you've got a chance to work on it. Remember, there's only been one perfect being to walk this earth, and it's not us, okay? So we make mistakes, which is fine. We just look to not repeat those mistakes over and over in the future. Let's go. Good boy. So you notice he didn't get up because I was sort of circling around him. That's perfectly fine. Once I start moving, his job is to do what, though? Be right here beside me, okay? Sit. Great. Good. Notice the break. That time I didn't give the hand signal. Break is the hand signal a lot for me, okay? Sit. So now he's holding the sit. I actually have a, a treat here in my hand, and I'm going to have him do the come command. You can see it's a lot like the break. The biggest thing on the come is I want him to come and sit in front of me. Once he sits, I'll reward him. If he doesn't sit, guess what I'll do? I'll tap up and say, no, sit. If he doesn't come right to me, it becomes a tap to me to come, okay? <clears throat> Good boy. See how he's looking at that way? Now he looks. Good boy. Tree out a boy. Break. So he has to hold that sit until I release him, okay? One thing about the come, especially off leash, we never call him to us unless we know he's going to come. So if we don't know he's going to come, and I'm going to pull out another treat. Remember I prefaced at the beginning, I like to give a lot of treats with come, especially if the dog is motivated. And in this case, we know Trooper is, and he's watching me. That's the curse of having a dog that watches you all the time. But I would go, hey, Trooper, come. You notice I did not tell him to come. Right. Uh, I did not tell him to come until I said, hey, Trooper, got his attention. He started running. Then I told him to come. Why? Because he was committed to me. He had these warm, happy thoughts of a treat, a positive emotion and whatnot, and he carried right on through. Notice my hand was right here. I want his focus to come here between my legs and not to my side so he can get distracted by something else. So he's committed. Good boy. If he did, good boy. If he did something wrong, I would never tell him to come to me and punish him. I would never call him to me and immediately put him up or do something that's not going to be fun for him because then that's going to teach him that coming to my owner is not always a good thing. We don't want that to happen, except for the time that we need it to happen. If it was an emergency, you want him so used to coming to you, he's going to come in that moment in time, and then you're going to praise him. So if you need to get on him, you go get him. 
If you don't, you don't. When I talk about consequence, that was a tap of the leash, you remember, it's words, it can be avoidant, but we're not here to intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, hurt him or have him fear it. It's measured. Believe it or not, that's a consequence. And it can get a little harder from there, but it only gets harder from there if he ignores our commands, okay? So he's really good. I probably may have gone to a level two, but that's about it. So we go half, level one, level two. And see, even level two, good boy. Does it bother him? Why? Okay, I'm gonna jump off the training bandwagon and just tell you, all of those trainers out there that don't believe in providing a consequence, did you see me just giving him a consequence? Was he worried about it? No, because in the pack, they bite each other. They're very physical with each other, and that's part of communication. Outside of the pack, somebody or another dog did that, that might be fighting tones and actions. But in the pack, touch is so important. And a little bit of bite, a corrective bite or a play bite is not going to matter as long as the giver is part of the pack and has earned that respect and ability to do it. Let's go. Good boy. So the next thing, sit, is the heel command. Let's go. He's going to walk right here beside us, okay? Heel is going to be the same thing, but now he's got to stay in a little box. His job is to try to stay right here. Our job is to keep him right here. If he starts to move out either direction, I'm gonna tap the leash and tell him no heel, okay? And when I stop, he's supposed to sit. Here's my hand signal, heel, no heel. Get him up. Good boy. And then when I stop, he's holding that sit. Good boy. Until I release him. Heel. So we're gonna turn. Watch me when I step off. See how he's coming right back to the box? I can even do a 180. But notice when I did the 180, I came out of the circle and walked a little bit so he, I could get him lined back up in the favorable, favorable position. Good boy. I am so proud of you. Ah, a boy. So this is a far cry from the excitement he used to be. I want him to be able to be happy and excited. If he started to jump me now, I would tap the leash, I might even grab a snout or a, a scruff, take him back down and tell him no, and then give him light praise and give him a chance to do it again. Let's go. Now you're gonna see some action here, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna show you his action. Okay, buddy, play. Back up, no play. Good boy. All right, no play. He loves to place command. I send him from uh, 10, 15, 20 feet away, he'll hit it. Why is he so excited? Because he got that phrase, word, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. When I put him on a, a place command, he can lay down, sit down, stand up, uh, read a book. I don't care what he does as long as, good boy, as long as he stays on the bed. If I wanted to reward that, I would. Now notice I was out here uh, 10, 15 feet away and sent him to place. That's not how it started. It started right here, teaching, over and over and over till he got it. Then I would come from a distance, distance, distance to get him there. Right, let's go. So now we're gonna come back and try to do it a little more calm. No, slow down. So you notice he was getting ready to hit that bed because it excites him so much. And I said, no, calm down, which was just me talking to be talking. Let's go. And we're gonna move away from it. And then we're going to come back. Good. And now we're going to walk around it. Good. Now, what? Ah, boy, good boy. So you notice you're still excited to hit the bed, but he didn't have a run and jump to get there. I just love it. He's such a good little boy. Uh, he's going to be a great dog for his owners. Remember, with Muff, Motivation is praise and consequence, but it's 20 times more praise than consequence. We want him excited about our interactions. We want him excited about uh, life. Yes, we're gonna have to bite him, just like hopefully your parents provide consequence uh, when you were growing up. Just remember, it's not about intimidation, domination, breaking the spirit, hurting him or having you, or having him fear you, okay? Let's go. Good boy. So last thing, load up. Good, whoop, come on, try it again. Good boy. Load up as to get in the car. He likes to get on furniture. Uh, 
He already knew load up before he came here, just not as the word load up, because he's a little athlete. So if you like him on furniture, that's fine. Uh, I don't have a problem with it as long as you're the leader. But typically what I would do is, is I would give him a command to get, unless you have a special piece of furniture, uh, I would give him the command to get up on the furniture, load up, or it could even be a place command, if he gets up there at times that you don't want him to. If you never mind that he's getting up on the furniture, you don't even need to do that. But just remember, if he gets on the furniture and you don't want your dog to do it, it's not off, it's not down, it's a no. And you go up and bite him off. You're not gonna need this leash forever. I hardly even need it now, okay? But the leash, as long as it's loose, is a great way to teach your dog in the moment what you expect out of him with obedience and in real life. Obedience is so important because it gives us a chance to praise him or provide consequence in that moment of time so he understands what we're trying to communicate with him. I guarantee you most of you out there have started off with a puppy and told him no and they listened in the beginning and then eventually it took louder, repeated no's or maybe sometimes no never got it because words aren't the primary way of communication with dogs. Touch is, okay? Then the other senses before we get to the words. That's why I marry words. That's why I say praise is words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion, as many of those as I can do in that moment. Consequence is words and touch, okay? So we bite him and tell him no, and then before long, he knows that no means a bite, even if he's not on a collar, okay? I appreciate it. This guy's a good guy. If you have any questions, let me know. I really appreciate you trusting me. You know, there's never ever a, a follow-up charge for a follow-up lesson. You pick up the phone and call me. If you come to me, we'll work. You got a great dog here. He's gonna be a good dog. Most of you have great dogs. It's just a matter of us teaching him or teaching her what they need to do in the proper time frame. This doesn't take hours a day, but it does mean that what you say, you mean, okay? Thank you so much. You know my number is 336-945-3232. Jim Hodges, Jim Hodges Dog Training. God bless. Bye-bye. Let's go.